All right, my cat's loud automatic feeders have gone off, so it is time to start the video. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. You would think I would put this in my script, but I was too cocky this time, even though I think I forgot last time. In case you don't already know, my name is Alex Jansen, and I forget to introduce myself whenever I film. Ha ha ha! Uh, but yeah, my name is Alex Jansen. Back to what I already filmed. But I also wanted to mention before I get into today's topic, of course you see my makeup is already done. I'm sorry. If anybody, if that was what, you know, solely what someone was here for, I do apologize. I do want to say I'm still going to be doing some get ready with me videos, but I'm going to separate the content. I think I learned last time that talking and trying to you know convey something correctly and also in an entertaining way while also doing your makeup no matter if you have it planned is harder than it looks and so i applaud anyone that does it on youtube but i just don't think it's my thing i'm not a makeup guru or anything and that's not what I want my main focus to be about. If I do the research, then I want to be able to devote my full attention to delivering that to you. So I'm going to separate the two on my channel. I'll still have some more casual get ready with me videos. Also going to uh, make those line of videos um, a little bit more explored, explorative. Maybe get into some fashion type of stuff. We'll see what happens. But with these main videos that I want to spend most of my time on, uh, we're going to stick with the psychology related topics, um, social justice, political science, things like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. What feelings arise when you hear these expressions? Black plague, black magic, black ball, black hole, black hearted, black mood, black sheep, if you're like me and most other humans, you'd probably say you're feeling some type of negativity, despair, uncomfortability right now, aka just something that is not good, something that you don't want to experience. But why does the color black make us feel this way? Well, first off, black isn't technically a color at all. If you want to get you know into the details, black absorbs all light in the color spectrum. So it's really all colors. And like the colors on the color wheel, black evokes varying emotions and reactions. For some, black evokes feelings of class, elegance, sophistication, and power. Think black tie affairs, that famous black credit card that everybody wants to, you know, a someday a force they can stun on people and also how priests and judges don those black robes me i think about how most of my closet is composed of black clothing so much so that in the past year or so i've made it a concerted effort to not get any more black clothes god damn it but for most black represents all things negative and evoke strong feelings of fear, anger, aggression, and sadness. And not only is it used widely throughout language to provoke these feelings, it's often seen as a stereotypical color for criminals and villains throughout entertainment and media across the board. Not only do your typical bad guys normally wear black clothing, more times than not, they often have darker skin than their heroic adversaries. So think uh, Mufasa and Scar from The Lion King, you know, Mufasa's glowing gold king of a man, well, king of a lion, Jesus. And Scar is darker, um, you know, he has that black mane, the brown fur. And also you can think of Stagecoach Mary and uh, Trudy Smith in The Harder They Fall. That's a more recent reference if you guys have seen that. But why is this a trend? Turns out a lot of pivotal research has been done on this exact topic. Now there's a lot of scientific language in this next book and I couldn't find a better way to put it than uh, writer Daisy Gruel did in her Scientific American article, article titled The Bad is Black Effect. 
She did an amazing job summarizing the research in layman's terms, so I'm just going to be pulling this straight from there. Psych! No, I am not. I will still be pulling excerpts from that article for sure. I just wanted to revise it a little bit and make it a just a bit more digestible and quick for you guys. So recent research suggests that people do have a proclivity to perceive someone with darker skin as more likely to have committed a, an immoral act, regardless of the person's race. Dubbing this tendency the bad is black effect, Professor Adam Alter of New York University, along with a couple of his colleagues, conducted six studies showing a link between skin tone and perceptions of whether a person committed a criminal act. So the first couple of studies that they conducted, uh, the researchers specifically wanted to look at whether the media tends to run darker photographs of celebrities and politicians when writing about their transgressions. Now, uh, in both of these studies, after stati statistically controlling for the ratings of quality of the image, quality of the Im image would mean whether it was fuzzy or something. Also, if the you know, whoever was in the photo appeared to be disheveled or if they were well dressed. So just controlling for all of those factors that can make a picture look better or worse. I'm sure you're shocked, but they found that articles containing negative content were more likely to appear alongside darker colored photographs. Now that was regardless of the celebrity or politician's race. And by darker photograph, that's just meaning, uh, you know, if let's just say Kim K, such a highly photographed figure, and say they're talking about her having a baby all happy, they're gonna show pictures of her in the sunlight, you know, her skin's gonna appear brighter and more lightly colored in those photos. Whereas if they're talking about maybe anything right now or just any negative story that they would have to run on Kim they would choose maybe one where she was in the shade or well you know taking a night stuff like that so regardless of race if there's a bad story about you best believe <laughs> your skin tone is going to look darker in that picture than what it looks like in real life so the researchers asked the question why though? They believe that the answer may lie in a pervasive belief that darkness and badness tend to go together. I would say that's a pretty good guess. Now, they demonstrated this psychological link between darkness and badness by running several experiments where participants were asked to choose between headshots to identify a perpetrator. So first, participants examined two different grainy video surveillance images alongside a brief sentence describing what the man in each image was doing either before or after the image was taken. One of those, the participants would be told he was doing a virtuous act, like saving someone's life. And the other, the participants were told that he is about to go steal from someone or murder someone. After viewing each image and description, participants were shown two headshots of different men. I'm assuming these different men along the baseline would have similar skin tones, but one of the headshots had been artificially darkened while the other had been artificially lightened. And then, of course, they were supposed to choose which of those men had either committed the virtuous act or the non-virtuous act, the bad act. Now, even with these two grainy surveillance images probably looking very identical and also probably not being able to tell outright how dark or light that person's skin tone is, wouldn't you be shocked to find out that uh, the participants pretty much across the board indicated that the headshot that showed someone with darker skin was, uh, you know, they guessed that they were probably the one that was committing the, the evil act, so to speak. The researchers even tried to control for a couple of things, like how warmly participants felt towards white Americans as opposed to darker skinned minorities. But, you know, of course, after you figure that stuff out and figure out where people are on that spectrum, they found that those participants who held more negative attitudes toward darker skinned minorities were more likely to choose the darker photograph when asked who committed the immoral act, not surprising. But what is surprising is that 
Additionally, the participants were asked to indicate uh, the soul color of each man in the surveillance image. And that was a scale from white to black. So what do you think happened with that? Well, even after statistically controlling for participants' racial attitudes, the researchers found that participants who thought the man who committed the immoral act had a darker colored soul were also more likely to think that he had darker colored skin. So even if we're not relating this specifically to skin tone, we ultimately find ourselves in the same place. After hearing that, are we surprised? Are you really surprised? Probably not. <laughs> the, only, the one thing that some of you may find surprising is that this association was found across people of all races. But trust me, all of us fall victim to these implicit colorist biases. Makes sense why everyone in Hollywood, animation, and gaming, you name it, makes use of the stereotypical dichotomy between the quote-unquote light and the quote-unquote darkness, or good and evil, respectively. It appeals to our basic nature and is the easiest way for an audience to associate certain characters as either good or bad. Apart from typecasting characters with a darker skin tone as the villains, the universal positive association and preference for lighter skin has a detrimental effect on minority representation in media. Even though we are making continuous strides to diversify the cast of movies, TV shows, and the like, there's still a huge issue related to colorism. That is, Hollywood repeatedly casts light-skinned minorities over their darker-skinned counterparts. I'm sure most of you can think of a few movies that have gotten roasted alive on Twitter for this very issue, but I'll help jog your memory with a few examples. When the trailer for the 2016 biopic about Nina Simone debuted, it came under intense scrutiny when people saw Zoe Saldana casted as Nina Simone. Zoe Saldana is, you know, very fair-skinned. Uh, she is definitely an actress that has experienced some of the light skin privilege that's floating around Hollywood. Even though, love her, she's amazing, uh, amazing. She's amazing, an amazing actress. This didn't look very good. Especially, you know, in order to achieve Nina's look, Saldana's skin was darkened and she wore a prosthetic nose while filming. It's like, why didn't you guys try to find someone that looked a little bit more like her? If you look at pictures of Nina Simone next to Zoe Saldana, just the skin tone right off the bat, you're thinking, this is probably not going to work, but I wasn't making the decision. Another example, Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, that movie left some Asian Americans disappointed by the lack of darker skin actors. I didn't see too much uproar about that specifically. I mean, I love that movie. I thought it was really good, but I could definitely see where people were coming from. It didn't seem like there was a lot of diversity as far as skin tone for that cast. Along those same lines, last summer, the movie adaptation of In the Heights was criticized for the overwhelming lack of dark-skinned Afro-Latinx people in its cast. That one I haven't seen. I need to. Lynn Manuel. Lynn manuel Miranda is great, but I mean, just from watching the preview, that's something that I kind of picked up right away. And also, I may get into this more later, but just as someone who has darker skin, I think I'm always a little bit sensitive to that. And I know that there's people in the Afro-Latinx community, in the Asian community that have a wide range of skin tones. Some of them can be as dark as black people. So I just across the board, whenever I see that, it's like, hmm, okay. I mean, not surprising, obviously, but I definitely notice it. The last example that I did want to hit on and spend some time on was the Tiana controversy from the Ralph Breaks the Internet movie that came out in 2018. Now, I did not know about this until I was doing research for this topic, but apparently whenever the first images and footage from Ralph Breaks the Internet came out in May of 2018, 
Uh, they were met with a lot of disdain, rightfully so, when fans noticed that the CG interpretation of Princess Tiana had much lighter skin, much lighter hair, and her features were very Eurocentricized, meaning, oh, I mean, a bunch of her features seem to be just very pointy, not, you know, rounded. Her, her lips were not as full as they were in the normal anim animation. It was just completely off. When I saw this, I was just so baffled. I had absolutely no clue about that. Even though Disney has no halo over its head when it comes to this kind of stuff, by no means whatsoever, they still run a huge operation. There's so many people that had to have worked on that movie. Imagine how many people had to sign off on those first images being released and they thought that, you know, that was good, that was okay. Because I think that that was something that people were really excited about as far as what the CG interpretation and the modern take was going to be like for all of the Disney princesses. So of course they included a clip of that scene and you know, the little sneak peek. It really just makes me sad because us black girls had to wake, wait so long just to get a black princess. Just to give you some context, Snow White was the first Disney princess, came out in 1937. The Princess and the Frog was released in 2009. So that's a very, very long time. And granted, they did have other princesses or minority groups like Mulan and uh, Pocahontas before Tiana, but it was just like, where's our princess at? You know? We had to wait until 2009 for that. You know, you add that to the fact that many of the black female actors and artists that we looked up to had a light complexion, we were even more stoked that Princess Tiana had darker skin because that was really cool to see too normally you know i think when 2009 i was probably how old was i jesus probably back in elementary school when i heard that they were gonna have a black princess i was really stoked but i did not think it was gonna look anything like me it, I think that just makes it even more disheartening whenever I heard about that and probably why there is so much of an uproar whenever that happened because it seems like they just kind of erased what made Princess Tiana so cool to the black community. They just wanted to make her racially ambiguous in this new interpretation. Just completely erasing the dark complexion, the dark curls, the full lips everything that made her her by by the company that animated her in the first place that's what i don't understand it's like you guys signed off on that in the first place and i mean you're not blind you can see that the color of her skin does has not translated over properly don't you want to do justice to your original animation i'm gonna just go off the rails if i continue moving on so I don't keep spiraling out of control. <laughs> Do we want to guess another institution that doesn't seem to like us heavily melanated folks? You'll be shocked by this one. I'll wait. You know what I'm about to say. You know what I'm about to say. The criminal justice system. So shocked, surprised, are we all shocked? I'm not. There's been some research done on this too luckily, so we can, you know, show the science receipts. I'm pulling from Annalisa Morelli's Quartz article called The Darker Your Skin, The More Likely You'll End Up in an American Jail, which the title of the article pretty much says it, but I just wanted to pull a few snippets. Quote, according to the study, it isn't just being black that makes a person more likely to be sentenced to jail in the U.S. It's how black they are. A person's lifetime chance of having been arrested, the study found, is directly proportional with the darkness of their skin. Ellis Monk, the Harvard sociology professor who authored the study, drew on data collected in a landmark national survey conducted between 2001 and 2003. Now, while this is from a while ago, keep in mind, you know, we try to always find research that's 
the most recent. Um, its extensiveness and depth makes the data collected a valuable source for analysis, so we're going to keep using it. The interviewers who administered the survey actually rated the skin color of the people they spoke to from very light to very dark. That allowed Monk to find associations between the color of one's skin and their encounters with the justice system. After accounting for differences like gender and level of education, he found that African Americans have an overall 36% chance of going to jail at some point in their lifetimes. Which we know, you know, the one out of three that they always say, that's really depressing. Now, dark-skinned African Americans have a 66% chance. That's a full 30% increase just for having darker skin. Put bluntly, while being black and poor may already predispose one to have a higher probability of contact with the criminal justice system and harsher treatment, being perceived as blacker intensifies this contact further and may increase the harshness of one's treatment by the criminal justice system as an institution, Monk wrote. So this isn't just seeing someone who looks like me on a screen now. While that does affect me, and that can be detrimental, this is someone's life, reputation, and future on the line. Because of something as arbitrary as skin color, being that's, that's the determining factor sometimes. You know, it's not like people are saying this out loud and it's, you know, whenever a judge hands down the sentence, you know, they don't say, because you are darker than this paper bag, sorry buddy, you guys stay in there for a lot longer than Whitey over here. I know this is dramatic. I really know this is dramatic. If you know me, you know this is how I am. But it just seems like all of these institutions that I'm mentioning are enforcing that theoretical paper bag test. Now, if you don't already know what the paper bag test is, it was a practice in some American clubs, churches, and other community organizations, including some that were run by African Americans, of holding a brown paper bag against the skin of a would-be entrant. If you were lighter than the bag, then you could go in. If you were darker, you gotta go. Hopefully that's all they say is that you gotta go. They don't do something else to you. I shouldn't be laughing. I'm just laughing away the pain. But that's it just seems like that's kind of what's happening here, at least in our minds or, you know, whenever people encounter this prejudice. We have the criminal justice system. If they were a person darker than this, uh, you're guilty. Sorry, what are you even here for? Don't even care. We don't even have to hear you talk. Just looking at you, you're guilty. With all things considered, what can we do to change the narrative on this? I have some ideas. Let me know what you think. One, we start off by recognizing the implicit biases that we all have in the first place. Let's just say it out loud. Keep having the conversation. Now, there's no need for anybody to have any guilt surrounding this. This is just a product of our shitty ancestors determining, you know, at some point that darker skin was undesirable. So it's not our fault that we're here, but it is our responsibility to do what we can to change the status quo. It's not going to change overnight, of course, but we have to keep working at it. We have to keep having the conversation and all recognizing where we stand, where we are, how it affects us, so that we can move forward, hopefully not keep repeating the same mistakes. Two, let's try to get more creative uh, and use visual cues other than skin tone to portray someone being evil or bad. You know, kind of along the same lines, how I mentioned just the associations of the color black earlier, They're, the villains are always wearing black clothing. I don't think we'll be able to get rid of that fully. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to associate, you know, the black clothing with being evil. You know, maybe that could probably be argued 
someone could probably argue against that, you know, in reference to satanic panic, <laughs> whenever people were being accused of being devil worshippers if they wore all black. I mean, people still have their thoughts about that now. You know, you don't want your kid to be a goth or anything. But again, like I said, my whole entire closet is black. It's very slimming, as you know. The fashion industry recognizes it as the color. We can't live without it. So I think we're smart enough to recognize that it has a double meaning to it. It can be used either or. And I think we are smart enough to separate black clothing and darker skin. But, you know, if especially right now, since we're still having the issue, we're definitely not over it. If we keep using the color black, just the color black in clothing and accessories and, you know, other things to complement a villainous character, will this ultimately keep leading us down the same path? I don't know the answer to that. But I think my main point is I would just love to see creators not just trying to appeal to our basic animalistic prejudicial nature, make the like us as the audience think outside the box or be shocked at who the villain turns out to be because we weren't expecting it because they weren't you know walking around in a long black cloak or a black turtleneck or they didn't they weren't petting a i guess it's typically a white cat but you know a black cat is also a mucky or you know just using other cues i couldn't really come up with a very good example for this the only thing that i could think of was midsummer and that i don't okay spoiler alert i don't think i'm going to really say anything that's going to ruin the movie but if you think about midsummer and the may queen outfit and the all white outfits that the group or the cult was wearing as a whole that movie was creepy as hell you can't tell me any differently I'm sorry if you didn't like it, but that was an amazing movie. I, I loved the, in, the different interpretation of what could be scary. I think that's what I loved overall about that movie. Um, because typically in most horror movies and most thrillers, things like that, obviously the character that you're trying to run away from that the, you know, the main character is being put up against is drenched in darkness. You know, the color black is, you know, basically what makes up their whole canvas for those kinds of characters. So even though she or the group, you couldn't, I don't think you can really call them villains or bad people. It was definitely a creepy vibe though. And they were able to get that across even though they're using colors that are technically associated with light, bright, and happy things. So just a thought. Number three. In my suggestions. Increase representation of people of color with darker skin tones throughout media and entertainment. That could probably arguably, arguably be the most important suggestion that I have. You know, in the case of how Zoe Saldana got in trouble for the whole Nina Simone thing, maybe in those instances where you have historical figures of color, get someone who resembles them to play them. There are so many actors and actresses out there that just want a chance to where if you just did your research, if you just dug a little bit more, looked past the typical A-list actors, which, you know, for black actors specifically and actors of color, a lot of those that are A-listers that are at the top of our minds have lighter skin tones, maybe venture past those normal selections and find someone who actually resembles them that can actually make us feel like we're actually watching that person. And you know, we'll be able to relate, the audience will be able to relate to that more. People of color will appreciate that more. I truly don't see what the issue is regarding that. Come on, casting directors, just do it, do it. And um, also for video games, this just makes me think, Recently, I started playing Lost Ark. It's a very new one that just came out. Typically across the board, whenever I play games, I'm really big on character customization. 
My boyfriend will tell you I will spend hours creating a character. I will spend more time creating the character rather than playing the game. It's that important to me. Um, but it is always disheartening to have games either only give you the, you know, just like one or two options for darker skin tones or just not even have that be an option at all. Maybe you can't really customize the character and the only characters that are available um, are white or have lighter complexions. So that's always very disheartening. But this Lost Ark game, they did with the character customization they went in not only do they have you can literally have any skin tone on the range of possible skin tone colors you can have any color hair you can have any texture hair they have multiple different uh braided hairstyles available and that is monumental, I feel like. And it's not just like the typical half-ass animated cornrows that you typically see. It's like braids that I want to copy in real life. Like, I don't know who they consulted for this. I don't know what hairdresser <laughs> they went to for their suggestions, but is all I have to say. And that kind of makes me want to play the game more. So take a note from their book, uh, other game creators, and... Also, you can take a note on trying to be more creative with, you know, the lightness and the darkness, how that's always combating and maybe trying to get more creative with how you depict the villains, what they looked like, things like that. Along that same note, we need to increase the amount of people of color throughout the crew working on film, TV shows, video games. Not just the cast. The focus shouldn't be on just the cast. It needs to be the people working on the production as well. Back to the Tiana crisis. I feel like that is just a testament that there had to have been a lack of people of color working on the animation, making the corporate decisions, etc. Because had there have been more people that look like me in there, you know, it wouldn't have been a riot or anything, I'm sure. But that would have definitely have been brought up. Someone would have been able to tell, suss that out, like we needed to take a, a closer look on just at least the difference between the skin tone, at least. Finally, I feel that it also may help to have minority actors and actresses who have benefited from that light skin privilege in Hollywood and other spaces to speak out and recognize it. Like I said, we need to be having this conversation constantly, but the people that are in these positions and reap the benefits from this unfortunate consequence of our society, they should be speaking out too. Doesn't mean that they can't still have a career. Doesn't mean that they're not still talented and deserving of where they are, but they also need to recognize that they had some a little bit of help getting there. And a couple of examples of this that I wanted to mention is I feel that Rihanna and Beyonce are doing the damn thing when it comes to this. Now, I don't know if you could technically, well, you could say Hollywood because they, they've both been in movies. Um, and just the ability that they were able to maybe cross over so easily from the music industry to acting in those instances, that's probably also a testament to some of the light skin privilege that they experience because they are megastars. They're some of the most known names in pop culture and probably some of the most well-known names of black people in pop culture, at least right now. But Rihanna, her work with Fenty Beauty right now, she has made so many strides, strides in the makeup industry to be as inclusive as she can so that people of all skin tones can have makeup that they can use that makes them look and feel beautiful because that is a really big thing that i don't think a lot of people realize is when probably just five years ago if i were to walk into a drugstore and i'm not even that dark if i were to walk into a drugstore and try to find a foundation I could probably find one that was close, but it never really looked right on me. I would always have to get the more expensive foundation, um, and that's 
there's some privilege for me right there because I feel like I haven't even had the worst struggle that some women with very, very deep, that deep, rich, like ebony skin. Oh man, those poor people, they, there was nothing for them. There was nothing for them. And even more recently, before Fenty Beauty came out, there were very limited options for people that had those very, very deep, 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 rich, dark skin. I like Lupita Nyong'o, that kind of skin. Oh my gosh. It's, it always just looks like butter, pearly. Mm. Uh, she's doing her work to make sure that women of all skin tones can feel included and feel like they can participate in the makeup space and make themselves look as best as possible, even though they look great naturally too. Um, another one uh, is Beyonce's, well, her Black is King album, but more specifically the Brown Skin Girl song and music video. When I tell you a bitch cried so hard <laughs> the first time that I listened to that song and also the first time that I watched that music video, I was done. Hearing the words of that song and seeing how she, you know, depicted the feeling and the mood of that song in the music video, it just took me back to when I was a kid, you know, a lot of the black women that I looked up to in media, I mean, I, oh my God, I will love Beyonce until the day I die, but I don't have her skin tone. I don't have Rihanna's skin tone. I didn't look like a lot of those women. And, you know, even though I feel like my parents were really good about trying to make sure that I had examples of people that looked like me, like that I was knowledgeable about those people and that I was also, you know, still at least a little bit immersed in black cultures so that I had good examples of people like me out in society, out in Hollywood, out in the real world even. But it was just harder. Like, I, I think I'm just so excited to be able to make my kids listen to that or show that to my kids, especially if I have a little girl, that's going to do wonders for her self-esteem. I feel like that's where a lot of like my self-esteem issues come from just because I grew up in suburbia and I was running around the, the freaking playground arguing with kids that I wasn't black, I was African American. I did not want people to call me black because like even in my head that just made me like feel darker. I'm just so excited because there's just so many more examples of people of all skin tones living their best life and feeling beautiful and embracing, you know, their skin and their natural hair. Ugh, I just love it. That's a good note to end on. I think that's a really, I think those two are, again, doing the damn thing. Those are two people that you can definitely give the example of benefiting off of the light skin privilege and they're just kind of doing their part to change the narrative and make sure that everyone of all skin tones feel included. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned something, gave you a new perspective. Um, you know, always be thinking about that. Let's always be aware of that. Let's try to embrace embrace all of our hues. A couple of the things that I didn't mention at the beginning. I don't know if you guys noticed my new banner and my new logo. Shout out to Michaela Bruce for doing that and Old Bestie from UNKC. Uh, she's awesome. I'll ask her what she wants me to link and it'll either be her website or her Instagram. I'll put her link down below if you're interested in going and looking at her stuff, maybe working with her. Um, I freaking love my banner and my logo. I love it so much. I can't get over it and I can't rave about it more. You wanna ask me about it? Cause I'll rave about it and I'll rave about her. But anyway, hope you guys have a great day. Um, stay safe. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If any of this had you going, oh my God. Or if you were like, this doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Any suggestions you have for future topics? If you're really, really heartbroken and now about me not doing my makeup while I do this, you can let me know too. I could try it again. I really could if you guys loved that, but that's all I'll say on that. So just let me know. Just give me feedback. I, I thrive on the feedback. 
I don't know how to end this. All right, well, bye.